with nothing to say they just lost their dearest friend all that he said now he was dead so this is the way it would end the dreams they had dreamed were not what they see now that he was dead and gone the garden the jail the hammer the nail how could a night be so
Happy Resurrection Sunday. It is good to see you here to worship this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. You know, every Sunday for us is a celebration of the resurrection, but Easter Sunday is even more special. So we celebrate the fact that Jesus died, he was buried, and then came the morning. What a great truth that is. I want to read for us out of Mark chapter 16 this morning as we begin. Mark chapter 16 says, When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on that first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone? For it is very large. And looking up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be afraid. You see Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified, but now he is risen. He is not here. Today we celebrate that truth. What a glorious opportunity it is for us to gather together as the people of Christ to celebrate a risen Lord and Savior. A couple of things I wanna call your attention to as we begin this morning. A couple of announcements there in your bulletin. Uh, the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, and we do this every year about this time, we take up an offering for the purpose of supporting missionaries around North America in order that they could go and tell others, you know, there are people all over North America, all over the world even today, who aren't in church on Easter Sunday morning because they don't know who Jesus is. And so every year about this time, we take up an offering in honor of Easter to support missionaries that are going out and sharing the good news of Jesus. Also, college students, right after church next Sunday morning will be lunch for you all in the atrium. And then somehow we're at the point where we're only about a month away from graduation Sunday. And so if you're a graduate or have a graduate in your family, somebody who's graduating this year, uh, let, let the church office know the information about that is there in your bulletin. And then one last thing, if this is your first time with us here at Frederick, we wanna encourage you to fill out a connect card just like this. It's behind the, the seat in front of you. We'd love to have an opportunity to follow up with you, with you this week, get to know you, you get to know who we are as a church. And so if you would do that for us, you can leave that on your seat when you leave this morning. You can give it to one of the pastors out in the foyer. We'd love to have a, a record of your attendance and have an opportunity to connect with you after today. All right, well, I think we are ready to start. Just we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, we're re ready to see somebody unite with Christ this morning in baptism. So if you'll turn your attention to the you baptism. May, you may take a seat. So today we have another wonderful day with baptism, and we celebrated one last week, and we have another this week. Um, today we have Lara Steele and her family uh, behind her, and she's coming to uh, in this time to be obedient, and it's been a joy to see her growing up uh, from the little girl that she was when I first met her to who she is now. And it's been a blessing uh, to be able to see this and this day happen today. And so we love you and th uh, uh, pray that the Lord continues to guide you in uh, your walk with him. And so, Lara, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? All right. I baptize you as my sister in Christ in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Buried in death, raised in life. Let's pray, church. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for your guidance and your love to us, Father. We thank you for your Son and his example to us, Father, and our actions to being called to be in obedience. Father, we love you and thank you for this morning and just the great joy it is to be here and watching uh, a child of yours be obedient to you, Father. We love you and thank you, Father, for just the rest of this morning and just watch over it and let it just, uh, just be a wonderful joy and passion for us to be able to praise you and be in your word, Father. We love you and thank you in your holy name. Amen. Church, if you would, if you would, uh, take a few minutes, uh, greet those that are around you, and we will start uh, praise and worship again here soon.
absolutely have a moment to celebrate this morning, don't we? So, church, it's good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, it's a pleasure to not only get to worship our Lord and Savior, but also be able to do it with each other. So, we're going to read uh, the scripture this morning, which is in 1 Corinthians. If you want to turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. Start in verse 12. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation is in vain, and so is your faith. Moreover, we are found to have be fault with. Moreover, we are found to be false witnesses about God because we have testified wrongly about God that He raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up. In fact, the dead are raised the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Those then who have fallen asleep in Christ have also perished. If we have put our hope in Christ for his life only, we should be pitted more than, any, than anyone. Lord, we come before you today with hearts just uh, ready to celebrate the resurrection that you have. Um, Lord, we are indebted to you. We are grateful for you. And Lord, we cherish the moment that we get to be with you this morning. Pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, good morning. I feel like this would be a good time to say he is risen. And he, he's risen indeed, right? Isn't that the right answer? He's risen. He is, yeah, that's... It's a joyful thing to get to celebrate this morning together. And just before we get started, I just would say it's a real honor and privilege to, to uh, you know, just after last weekend to have the, I guess, the affirmation of the church in uh, his, his leading for the lead pastor position going forward. And I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, I feel like this is a season of hurry up and wait, um, just so you know, you know, because I'll start on June 1st. And, and in the meantime, I'm just looking forward to continuing things like we've been doing. And it's a joy to get to preach um, this morning and have that opportunity. And uh, I'm excited to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 together because it's all about the resurrection. And uh, I was thinking this week as I was um, watching news headlines, you know, kind of like, like we do. Um, and you probably heard the, the story about the, the big container ship in Baltimore that, um, that struck a bridge and within seconds, the whole bridge was in the water. And it was a really, I mean, if you watch the video of that, I mean, it's a sobering tragedy to watch. 
And I was thinking about that as I was thinking about this message for today, and it just hit me that, you know, in many ways, the resurrection is much the same way to the, the, the message of the gospel. The, the resurrection holds up the whole thing. It, it validates and it proves um, that Jesus is who he said he was. And, uh, you know, <laughs> just thinking about bridges, um, I don't know if you think very much about bridges when you drive over them. I remember whenever I was a kid, I lived not too far from the Mississippi River, and regularly we had to drive across a bridge into Dubuque, Iowa, um, over a uh, a potholed bridge, and every time I, I held my breath and I wondered if we would make it over. And uh, I guess I probably didn't need to be so worried because every time we made it just fine. Um, but that's kind of, and, and maybe if you've um, driven on other bridges down in, the, in, the, in Florida, um, you know, you, you just drive along miles of bridge, right? And there's nothing but water, and you just kind of wonder, like, is this going to be okay? I don't know, I have a little bit of a fear of heights, and uh, just even the thought of crossing a bridge in the midst of water, and it's like, oh no, this is troubling. And I would suggest to you today that when we think about the resurrection being a bridge that connects us to God and verifying the, the validity of who Jesus is, there's confidence. And there's nothing to be afraid of about this, you know, hope that we have in Christ. And so this morning we celebrate, He's risen. And, you know, we rejoice in, in that, and we rejoice in the fact that um, although Jesus did die an agonizing death, and he suffered greatly on the way to the cross, and he was really dead, really laid in a tomb, on the third day, he rose again. And whenever um, some, you know, some women went to the tomb to look for him, to put spices on his body, um, just like the text that Jeff read this morning, he wasn't there. And, and very quickly, some angels appeared, and they said, well, who are you looking for? And you know, looking for Jesus, and he's not here. He's risen, just like he said he would do. And so they ran off, and they, they told the disciples who came running to, to rejoice and to, to talk, you know, to, or not, actually not to rejoice. At first, they came running to ask the question, did he, what happened? Where did Jesus go? Who took his body? And they f found only grave clothes. They found nothing to, to mourn over. In fact, there was cause for rejoicing, and soon Jesus would appear. They would see Jesus, and um, Mary Magdalene and the other women who were there, they saw him, and they went and told the disciples who saw them. And then Jesus would walk along the road to Emmaus. You can read that account in Luke chapter 24, um, talking with a couple of disciples. He was alive. And then our text earlier, before what Jordan read just a moment ago, it says that Jesus appeared to over 500 people at once. That would be roughly this amount of people Jesus appeared to. So if you want to know, was there eyewitness testimony about Jesus rising from the dead? God's word is really clear, absolutely certain that Jesus really rose from the grave. The resurrection matters. And today as we look at 1 Corinthians 15 together for, for a couple of minutes, I, I, I wanted to just present to you from this text, from verses 12 on, um, three reasons why I think the resurrection is absolutely integral to the gospel, why it's central to the gospel message, why we must have the resurrection. And so the first reason, we see this in the first few verses, is that the, the resurrection is integral to the message of the gospel. Like the, the, the actual, the contents of the, of, the, of the gospel depend upon the fact that Jesus really rose from the grave. Um, this is what Paul says there in verse 12, when he says, now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, then how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? Like our faith is built on a miracle. It's built on the miracle that Jesus rose from death. He was not, as some say, um, just mostly dead. No, he was really dead. He really died. And and came back to life. I, I heard a preacher um, this week um, talking about the, the resurrection. He said, if you can imagine, um, you know, burying someone at the foot of the Himalayan mountains, and then after that, them just rising through the top of the mountain, you know, victorious over death, that's the same sort of thing that, that has happened here with Jesus rising from the dead. It's impossible. The impossible has happened. And so, um, the message of the gospel depends on the, the reality that Jesus really rose. 
And if you look back in um, 1 Corinthians 15 to the, the verses before what I read today, like starting in verse 3, you see a quick account of the, the gospel. He says, For I delivered of, to you of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then he appeared to Cephas in the 12, and he appeared to more than 500 brothers at a time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. And you could keep reading, but the, the essence of the gospel is Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And so the rose again part, the resurrection is absolutely integral to the gospel message. And he says, as he, we go on in this text in the next verse, he says, and if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. That the word vain there literally means empty. So you're, are, if the resurrection if, isn't true, then our preaching of the good news about Jesus is empty. There's no weight to it. Um, our faith is empty faith. There's nothing to it. There's no substance to it, if not for the resurrection. And Jesus rose from the grave victoriously. He, he really did. I was thinking about this um, verse where it says, when it says that his, um, then our preaching is empty. It's possible that some of you here today may believe that preaching is, most preaching is empty. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I've heard it before, you know. Um, I, and, and some of you maybe are here this morning, just, I, I just know this how, how it is, it's, it's Easter and you might be here because someone invited you or you want to make someone happy and so you're here and you're just like, but I'm not really looking forward to the preaching part because I don't really think there's anything to be heard there. And I would just say to you that whether that's true or not, you can determine later, but the preaching of the gospel, there's substance and you need to listen because Jesus really did rise from the dead. This is a verifiable, historical fact. And, and then he, the Apostle Paul goes on in the next verses. He says in verse, 19, um, verse 15, if we have even been found to be misrepresenting God because he testified about God that he raised Christ and if he did not raise, no, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead have not been raised. So basically what he's saying is, if the resurrection is not true, then we've actually misrepresented God himself. Because we, our preaching says that God raised Jesus from the dead, and we're saying that God did something that God didn't do if we don't believe that there really is a re resurrection. And I know for most of you here, I don't need to debate the validity of the resurrection. You believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I just want you to see and to, to, to grasp and feel the weight of the, the reality that the resurrection absolutely matters to the message of the gospel. And, and so, you know, our faith is built on a miracle, yes. You, you maybe cannot take um, this conversation to a laboratory and test it scientifically, but what we can say is Jesus was really dead and he was really risen. And there's all the evidence points to that. And so at the end of this, we have to ask the question, well, what am I gonna do with that? Um, C.S. Lewis has this famous um, thing he calls, it's called the trilemma, that Jesus is either Lord, liar, or a lunatic. And you might think about, um, oh, Jesus is just a crazy man, or, um, I mean, or, or he's, um, he's a liar. But as we read this message, that's not even on the table. Really, the question is, okay, if Jesus really rose from the dead, then he must be Lord. And that demands a response. And so the message of the gospel centered around the resurrection calls us to a response, and that's simply that we need to repent of our sin and, and follow him, believe in him, believe in the work that he has done on our behalf. And that leads us into the next, um, the, the next reason why the resurrection is so integral to the gospel. The resurrection is integral to the power of the gospel. Um, look at verse, verse 17. Actually, starting in verse 16. If the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So if you wanted to say, I want, I kind of, I, I'm okay with Jesus, but this part about the resurrection, I'm just not sure about. 
I'm, I, I don't know about that. I would just say like that resurrection is absolutely essential for us as we want to, to live in victory over sin. And basically what Paul is saying is no resurrection, then there's no power to save. Then Jesus isn't really who he said he was. He was, just, he was just a good teacher. He was probably just a little bit crazy. Except for the resurrection, except he rose again. He, he did what he said he was going to do. And so there's, there's power in Christ because of the resurrection. Um, last week, um, one morning, uh, our family woke up to no power in the house. I don't know if anyone else did. I think it was just a few houses in our neighborhood. We kind of scratched our head and said, why is there no power? Um, but anyways, we went to the light switch and flipped the switch on, and we tried to, to like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> we wanted light. It was early in the morning, and no power came. I mean, no light came because there's no power. And, um, you know, you've, you've experienced that before, and this is kind of shocking to realize how much we depend upon electricity. But in the same way, the resurrection gives power to our faith. The resurrection um, shows us that, that Jesus is mighty to save. He's victorious over sin and death and the impossible. He can make a way when there's no way. And you might say, well, you know, as the song says, um, I was buried beneath my shame. You know, who could carry that kind of weight? Jesus can. Jesus rose from the, from the grave victorious so that we too might walk in newness of life. It reminds me of Romans chapter, chapter 5 where it says, just as um, sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and so sin reigned, um, and, and there, was, there was no hope to, to do enough to make, you know, to make yourself righteous before God. In the same way, through one man, Christ, life has come to all who will turn to him in repentance and belief. Um, and, and he gives victory over, over sin. Um, Romans chapter 6 um, and it begins says, saying, well, if Jesus has done all this, so, so what, should, what do we need to do then? Should we just continue to live in sin? Because he did it anyway. He's, he's, the one, I mean, he's the one who makes it possible for me to follow Christ. Why is it important that I not sin? Why, why is it important? That, and, and so the Apostle Paul answers that question. He says, shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, just like we saw, who have been baptized into Christ, have been buried with him in his death and were risen with him in his life? And if we've been united with him in a life like his, I mean a death like his, we will surely be united with him in a life like his. He gives power. There's power to save because of the, of the, the work of Jesus and his resurrection seals that. Jesus is who he, he said he was. You know, no other world religious leader um, it can, can have this, this claim. There's no other world religious leader who um, you know, made some prophecies and taught some good things and then died and then rose again, except Christ. He's the only one. You can, you can listen to the teachings of Muhammad, but he's dead. You can listen to, to um, and read what Buddha wrote, but he's dead, and so many others. And, and they have no hope. In fact, Buddha even said on his deathbed, I, I don't know. But Jesus died and said, I know where I'm going. I know what's going to happen. And in three days, just like God delivered Jonah from the belly of the well, so he will deliver me. I will raise victoriously. And he did. He did what he said he would do. And so the, the power of the resurrection gives, gives power to, to us to know that we can, we can conquer sin and death because he did. And he makes it possible for us to have victory. And really, once again, calls us to surrender to him, to repent, to believe, to follow. And so as we've worked quickly through the text this morning, we see that the, the gospel message and the power of the gospel hang on the resurrection of Christ. And finally, as we look at the, the remaining part of this passage, we see the resurrection is also integral to the hope of the gospel. The resurrection gives us hope. I'm going to reread verses 17 and 18 through 19. It says, If Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ 
We have hope in this life only. We are of all people to be most pitied. We have hope because we believe that if we have died with him, we will be raised again with him. There's hope not just for this life, but for all of eternity, right? I mean, the resurrection gives us hope. It's not just, it's not just about getting the most out of this life. Um, as the Apostle Paul later says in this passage, um, if the resurrection is not true, this is verse 32, he says, then what do, I, what do I to gain by fighting wild beasts at Ephesus? And if the dead are not raised, then let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Just like, might as well live it up. If the resurrection isn't true, then, then, then there's no hope. Then it doesn't matter. We're just all going to, just death just means in the grave. But because Jesus didn't stay in the grave, his resurrection gives hope to all. There is a resurrection day coming for, for all. And, and actually, Jesus says there's a resurrection to to life eternal or to eternal death and to, you know, the agony of hell. And so Jesus' resurrection gives hope. Um, and, and part of that hope, and we saw in verse 18, is to those who have already, as, as the text says, fallen asleep, or just a, it's a nicer way of saying those who have died. And, and if we don't believe in a resurrection, then there's no hope. But we can stand at the edge of a of a grave today and say there is hope because this life is not all there is there is there is more yet to come and um so it, it so part of that hope is for those as we as we mourn and grieve those in our lives who have have passed on but then it's also hope for us knowing that one day we too will die and and, and we don't need to fear because there's hope um, for, for eternity. Um, again, just, I, I like what the Apostle Paul says there when he says, humanly speaking, I, why would I go fight a beast at Ephesus? And I'm just thinking about the Colosseum and different things that happened in the, in the, the Greek and Roman world. And so apparently the Apostle Paul is subjected to that sort of torment. And he says, I can go doing that because I don't, I'm not worried about what's going to happen to me. You know, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Like, I know that there is hope of being united with Christ, and that's our hope as well. It reminds me of this story that was circulating on the internet a few years ago, and uh, probably you've heard it, and you can give me a hard time later for mentioning it, but um, it's the story of a, um, an older lady as she um, was talking to a pastor about um, her um, funeral arrangements and things, because she knew that she didn't have too much longer, and she said, whenever I'm buried, I want to be buried with a fork, <laughs> and he says, what? She said, yeah, I've been to many church potlucks and many good dinners over the years. And if they said, keep the fork, then I always knew that something better was yet to come. And, and she said, I want to be buried with a fork in my hand because I want people to ask, why is that there? And say, because there's something better yet to come. And that's the hope that we have in the, the gospel, right? We have the hope that there is something better yet to come. This, this life, you know, however many years the Lord gets a, gives us, is short in comparison to the vast length of eternity. And in all eternity, we have hope because of the resurrection of Christ. And further into this hope, he, into the next, the next um, part of this passage, um, we also see that part of our hope is not just about ourselves, but it's also about the coming reign of, of Christ in the kingdom of God. And um, it reminds me of a, of a verse that I've been thinking a lot lately, um, memorized a while back, is um, Psalm 103, verse 19, which says, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. We know that no matter what happens, the Lord is still seated on his throne. I remember growing up, often when trouble would happen um, at, our, at our house or in our lives and things, I remember my mom saying, well, let's just pray, because the Lord's still seated on his throne. And the reason we can have that sort of hope is because of the resurrection. And the resurrection gives us that, that hope. And, but let's, I want to read um, the next few verses together, starting in verse 20, because it really speaks to this. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
but each to his own order, Christ the firstfruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, and he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet, but when it says all things are put in subjection, it's plain that he is, um, he is ex- accepted who put all things in subjection under him. In other words, God is still above even Christ. Um, and when all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. So just, there's a lot there that kind of, as you read through it, almost kind of get a little bit tripped up in it. But the main, the point is that death came through one man, so life comes through one man. God in the flesh. Jesus came to the earth, lived a perfect life, died, and then rose again so that he could give life to all humanity, to all who would repent and believe and follow him. And then, Scripture is clear that one day, every knee will bow before Christ, before God. Every knee will bow because he is going to reign over all things. He, he'll reign forever. So this is our, our hope. is not just about ourselves and, and our death and our future resurrection, but our hope is that Christ reigns eternal in the kingdom of God. And there's such hope in that. No matter what happens in an election year, no matter what happens in our world and our nation, He reigns. And that hope all comes back to Resurrection Sunday, where our hope is in Christ and what he has done. So sometimes we look around at a world that feels like it's in shambles. Um, And as believers in Christ, we don't need to despair because our hope is in Christ. That he has conquered sin and death in the grave and he will reign eternally and we can trust him. I said earlier that our faith is built on a miracle, and it is. Our faith is built on a miracle that that God would love sinners while we were still sinful. He would die for us. He would send his son to die on the cross for us so that we might have a bridge to him. And that comes as we trust him in repentance and belief. And... I guess the, the question that it comes down to is, what's your response to the resurrection? What's your response to the gospel? What are you doing about it? If you're a follower of Christ, and I know many of you are, and you're, you're faithfully pursuing him, I hope that this is just a good reminder that our hope is in, in Jesus, in the supernatural work that he does. But if you're sitting here today and, and you're, you're coming on the invitation of someone to, to church this morning and, and, and you're not sure about where you are with God, I would just say this is a great place um, to ask questions and a great time to say, I want to be made right with God. I want to be made new. I want to believe in the resurrection hope. And uh, the Bible is really clear about that. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And that can begin um, a, a life of walking with Christ. So if that's where you are today, I would just invite you to, to, you know, to respond to Christ in, in, in repentance and belief and, and following him. And in a couple of minutes, um, we're going to sing. There will be a time where you can do that. You can come talk with me or one of the other elders at the front. And we'd love to talk with you about that or just pray. If you just need prayer this morning, you could come to the front in a little bit and pray. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll move into that time. Father, thank you so much um, for the opportunity to gather this morning and to celebrate that Jesus is risen. He's, he's no longer in the grave, and he lives. You are alive. And we just thank you for that. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. Lord, I just, um, I pray that this morning that you would do in our midst, through the fellowship, through the worship, through your word, that you would do something in our hearts that for the one who is weary this morning, that you would bring revival, you would bring resurrection of, of, of spirit, you know, resurrection of a desire to, to live for you. And Lord, for the one who has never surrendered to you, I pray that today 
might be that day, Lord, that you would, you would call them to yourself. As um, your word says, um, this, 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 the flesh is, is not able to save. Um, only the Spirit gives life. And so we just pray that you would do that this morning, and I pray that you'd put it on the heart of, of folks to, to come and to pray and to be, to be made right with you this morning. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you want to go ahead and stand, and then I just want to invite the other elders in the room if you want to come and stand in the front. And if you would like to come and, and just pray, it doesn't have to be for salvation, just pray about something that's going on in your life. Maybe you're despairing and you need hope. Um, come, come talk with us or what, whatever is on your mind. If you want to know, like, how can I be a part of this church more faithfully or something like that, we'd also love to talk with you about that. Or how to follow Jesus for the first time. Come and, 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 and talk with us.
together and celebrate the resurrection. I know there's probably a lot of, you know, dinners and meals and things like that to be had, right, as you go out, but I hope that you'll stay and say hello to a few folks, and, and uh, we're truly glad that you're here this morning. If you're a guest, I'd um, just love to invite you to come back. Next week, we're going to start a new series for the next, um, well, next couple of months um, through the, the book of James, and so we're excited about that, and I hope you'll join us again next week, be involved in community groups and things like that. I want to pray, and then we'll be dismissed. Thank you for being here this morning. Father, thank you so much um, for the opportunity to gather and to worship you and open your word together and be reminded of um, the the power of the resurrection and that it matters still for us today. I pray that you'd help us as we leave this place um, to go with the hope of the resurrection um, on our hearts and our minds, and I pray that you would use us as ambassadors for this hope um, to our families and uh, the places where you take us even today. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.